South Vietnam and America, of course, had the relationship before the war and, and, and when the war ended with the fall of Saigon, and there was a, a huge adoption program practically. And Vietnamese were moved over here and I think that we found the Gulf Coast to be uh, not unlike uh, our home. A lot of Vietnamese people came from fishing background and so it was a place where they could do something profession-wise, it was something they could do that they were familiar with from Vietnam and apply their skills. But also because it's, we're, we're close to the coast and we have the port, a lot of ingredients that uh, are typical in Asia come in here readily and are readily available in the supermarkets. So I think that kind of helps people feel like they're more closer to home here in Houston. We are about close to 300,000 of Vietnamese uh, in, in Houston area. In Houston, Vietnamese uh, population here is like, uh, I think, third in the United States. There's a lot of Vietnamese people. Vietnamese crawfish started with Louisiana style boiled crawfish, but the Vietnamese of the Gulf Coast uh, took it a, another step and they added some Asian aromatics to the boil, lemongrass, and ginger, and they made a sauce out of butter and garlic and spices. They put the boiled crawfish into a plastic bag full of the sauce and shake it up and then they deliver it to the table. So you get it like in a bowl with all this soup in the bottom that you can dip the, dip the crawfish in as you eat. And, and then they serve it with this spicy garlic butter and, and other hot spices on the side. So it's just miles hotter and spicier than typical Cajun crawfish. It's the same thing as Louisiana crawfish, boiled and soaked just the way Louisiana people do, except we add a little extra layer of flavor to it. You know, on the outside, we're tossing in our own sauces, you know, different types of sauces. And that gives a, you know, Vietnamese twist to it. We're trying to bring the two culture in together. The two culture is from the Cajun side that uh, represented Louisiana, that's we very close with from Texas. And then the culture of Vietnamese is very, very close with French. And then, you know, Louisiana Cajun food is very much is a French colony. So we thought of it and then we kind of put them in together and that's how we come up with the concept. A lot of people have talked about how parallel Cajun and Vietnamese culture, food culture in particular, really is. Rice, seafood, spicy, and French influence, you know? So the two of them are sort of running along, you know, very close together to begin with. So these crossovers are not that big a deal between Cajun and Vietnamese. People typically start eating crawfish around January and then the season spans up until around July and that's when it officially ends. What coincides with the crawfish season is also Lent. So a lot of Vietnamese people are actually Catholic and since they have meatless Fridays, you know, when they have to observe uh, some of the Lent traditions, instead of uh, eating other seafoods, they'll come to crawfish restaurants, they'll eat a lot of crawfish. But on a regular day, maybe we'll go through six, seven, eight hundred pounds of crawfish. So that's typically between 20 to 30 sacks of crawfish, which is a lot of crawfish. You know, before it used to just be Asians who would hang around here, but now slowly other groups are also seeing how much good food there is around here and how affordable it is. So they're coming in and they're trying the crawfish, you know, they're trying some of the other foods like pho or they're trying dim sum. But that's how I think a lot of non-Asians have gotten into the whole crawfish craze because they come to this area to try other things, but then they also see that a lot of people are eating crawfish, and so they're trying that out as well. In our first three years, our restaurant is like uh, probably like 80% are Vietnamese. Now it's like 80% are mixed, only around 20% Vietnamese right now. And they're just catch, uh, catching on with everybody else right now. 
I mean, it's a rainbow of nationalities all eating Vietnamese crawfish. Plenty of Anglos, plenty of Latinos, plenty of black folks, and plenty of Asians. That's a cross-section of Houston. I think what appeals to a lot of Houstonians about crawfish is it's, it's a really fun thing to eat. It's a communal thing. You can get your whole family or group of friends together, and it's, it's such a casual thing to do as well. You know, you can put it in a table, and uh, everybody can just grab them and just eat them. We're, we're such a culture that emphasizes family connection, and it, it sort of allows us to eat together as a family, even when things were in chaos. So. We left practically with nothing, and so what we took with us were recipes and, and, and our memories of food, and so I think that those are the things that tie us back to, to our homeland. And I think the bigger context for Vietnamese crawfish may be that we, as a people, were able and willing to absorb something and reinterpret it uh, in a way that makes sense to us. And so I think, in a way, it's sort of Vietnamese trial and tribulations in a, in a little bag. I think, you know, that we can lose a country, be in a new place, and uh, still have the wherewithal to reinterpret something, create something new from something old, which I think is what we're doing, you know, and I think that's what we're doing with the uh, Vietnamese crawfish situation.